my lords. Today I bring news regarding the recent attack on Terra. An energetic parasite somehow found its way into the soul system and proceeded to attempt to drain our homeworld of all of its energy output. We were of course victorious in vanquishing the threat and have acquired a very interesting relic after the fact. We shall detail the events of the attack and this new relic in this report. What our people saw from orbit was terror shutting down. Every light source on the planet suddenly snuffed out all at once. What our people on Terra experienced was far worse. Vehicles falling out of the sky, agri-harvesters reduced to roadblocks, factories ground to a halt, hospital equipment lifeless and inert, backups engaged to no effect, a worldwide blackout as sudden as it was inexplicable. Silence and shadows veiled our world, and then suddenly strange light patterns bloomed across the sky, enveloping Terra in a kaleidoscopic light show. The two events were doubtlessly related, but our technicians and scientists are literally in the dark. Our technicians have been hard at work, but can find no defects in our power grid. Our generators are producing energy, but something is absorbing it. We think it may be the result of the light patterns we witnessed in the skies. Their geometric nature may betray an intelligent design. Is this thing that we have designated the Kaleidoscope, or CAL for short, a malicious entity, or just a mindless mist? After several long nights, and thanks to the coordinated effort of our technicians and scientists, the energy parasite has been cut off from our power grid. Messages have been pinged out across the inner colonies to identify if this is happening to just Terra or the wider Empire. It appears that we are the only ones suffering. Despite our long night ending, the kaleidoscope still shines upon us, seemingly hungry for more energy. We have no way to communicate with it, and despite several attempts at military action, our conventional weaponry does not seem to have had any measurable effect. A committee of our top scientists were convened and they presented us with several options. Firstly, they believed that we could feed the entity just enough to keep it appeased and still maintain 85% of our operational capacity. This could buy us time before a full solution could be discovered and implemented. We could also attempt to starve the creature, though given our total lack of understanding, we do not think that this will work. Our espionage operatives have also suggested organising an espionage operation to lure it towards another empire and effectively make it somebody else's problem. Although this initially seemed promising, after all we could send it over to the Blorg, let's see them love this thing when it consumes their energy output. The idea was ultimately dismissed. The alien may figure out the entity and use it in ways we currently do not yet understand. Debate raged for a number of hours before a young and upstart scientist, a Bill Lee, suggested that if it wants energy, let us choke it. We have the Dyson Sphere in the neighbouring Cirrus system. Let us divert that energy output straight to Terra. If this beast wants to feed, let it feed. We will attempt to drown it in its own glutton. We are several hours into channeling the entire output of our Dyson Sphere in the Cirrus system and the mighty energy output of all of Terra into the entity. It appears to be having a drastic effect. Hal has begun shifting in some quite lovely patterns and hues, and we wonder if the shifting patterns could be a form of communication. Or perhaps they were an autonomous process more akin to breathing. The science teams do not have an answer, but nevertheless Cal is providing us with invaluable amounts of scientific data. We have begun detecting particles never before registered on our instruments, and experiencing light in ways we have never before witnessed. According to the research teams, it would appear that this gluttonous overfeeding is in fact making the creature quite happy. This was certainly not our intention. Cow continues to feed on the glutton of energy we are providing. In return, it continues to fill Terra's skies, and in fact now, its light show stretches across the entire solar system, hues of light melting into one another, changing rays of wonder. For the first time in living memory, Terra stops, admires, and breathes. 
humanity, it appears, is appreciating this alien. It remains to be seen what latent effect this may have on us all. It appears that Cal has finally reached capacity. Whether it could not stop its consumption, or if this was its overall goal, is unclear. Cal appears to have exploded, and we have been blessed to experience the galaxy's most splendid light show. Kaleidoscopic petals folding in upon themselves, blooming, exploding in the most glorious of experiences. However, our scientific data tells of a less triumphant story. Cal became so full of power it appears to have collapsed in upon itself, and imploded like a dying star. However, at the centre of this energetic implosion, an object had been identified. Our probes have collected and retrieved it. It appears to be a crystalline cluster shaped very much like a flower blossom. According to preliminary studies, the flower can magnify the intensity of the faintest ray of light, breaking a few known laws of physics in the process. Our science teams hypothesize that the flower is merely the visible part of a larger construct, a multi-dimensional house of mirrors where light beams are infinitely reflected and recombined. Research continues, however the relic has been designated the vacuum flower. Our scientists tell us that the flower will drastically increase our monthly energy outputs. Rough estimates put that in the region of 10%. Furthermore, when activated, it appears to be able to enhance the energy produced by our own star. Quite a remarkable feat, and truly a wonderful gift to have been left behind by Cal. We continue to wonder whether or not Cal was intelligent, but nevertheless, Cal will go down in the annuals of Commonwealth history as a net positive, despite the long night it brought with it. Thanks for watching folks, to those who haven't yet encountered this relic, it is new and has been added with the Stellaris 3.9 beta. Uh, thank you to the devs for releasing the beta and allowing us all to play, and cue the habitat debate in the comments. As ever, if you want to hear more Stellaris lore stories, please click the video on screen now.